A creative repotting of these two orchids today. It takes a little bit of courage to do this for the first time in front of a camera. All of this and more coming up at the Orchid Hut. Welcome back to the Orchid Hut. My name is Dana and in today's video we are going to be tackling a repot of these two orchids in a hmm, slightly unusual, possibly slightly creative way. And this is something that I have never tried before. Um, I'm really, really anxious to see how this works and to see how these orchids grow in this setup over the growing season. Um, you know, it just so happens that both of these orchids did need to be repotted uh, now in early spring at the beginning of the growing season. And so I thought, why not? Let's do something a little bit creative, a little bit more decorative and uh, see how it goes. You know, um, when you experiment, oftentimes you learn uh, some really interesting new things that you never knew before. So uh, let's kind of go through what these two orchids are. And if you would like to skip to the second one, I will put a timestamp in this video to let you know when both of the repottings actually start. The first one is going to be uh, RLC Burdekin Wonder Lakeland, and hopefully the camera will focus on that tag. And this orchid has been um, in its current pot, I would say for about three growing seasons. Um, the first growing season it was in this pot, it actually bloomed. And I'll insert a picture of that bloom here. It was just an absolutely gorgeous white orchid uh, with a yellow center. Unfortunately, the last two years, it did not bloom for me. And we will be going into a little bit more detail about why I think that happened uh, as I'm repotting this orchid. So this will be number one, and I'll put a timestamp for when this repot starts. And then the second orchid that we're going to be repotting, I like to call it my complex hybrid epi. It's got a little bit of Serena O'Neill, some Mabel Conda, some Cordigera in it, and uh, yeah, that's quite a long name there. So uh, this will be the second orchid being repotted in a similar fashion to the first, but just a different orchid in a slightly different basket. And uh, yeah, this one has also been in this pot probably for about three years. So it is time, you know, for both, both of them. Now, my kitty, Cece, she's a calico, uh, you're gonna hear her meowing in the background. She does not want me to be filming an orchid video right now. She wants me to plop on the couch so that she has a lap to take a nap on. So if we hear her from time to time, that's just her way of protesting um, me not doing what she wants me to do. Okay, so um, I'm gonna take a quick little break here. We're going to be back with the first orchid, which is Lakeland Burdekin Wonder and we'll talk a little bit more about the creative nature of these repots. Okay, be right back. Okay, so back to get started on the first orchid repot. Now, let me show you uh, the general idea here. And uh, like I said in the intro, this does take a tiny bit of bravery to attempt this for the very first time on the camera when you've never done it before. But um, I found these baskets at the dollar store. Now, it's not exactly the dollar store anymore, I guess, because in 2023, the inflation was enough that uh, everything in the dollar store is now $1.25. But it's basically just a wire basket that has plastic coating over the wire, so it's a tiny bit flexible. And I don't think that it will, you know, rust away all that quickly because of the plastic coating on the wire. So this basket was $1.25 at the dollar store. And my idea here is that, of course, you know, with all of these holes, I don't want to lose the media, you know, as this plant is being watered. So my next idea, was to use this cocoa fiber in this bag, which I have never worked with before. We're gonna be opening it for the first time together today. And the idea here is to take the cocoa fiber, line the inside of the basket to keep the media from falling out. 
Now, let me just set this aside real quickly. And uh, having never worked with that cocoa fiber before, you know, I'm not sure what I'm going to be in for. But this orchid, um, and I mentioned a little while ago in the video, it had a false sheath this year, but it did not bloom. Uh, the sheath was there and green for the longest time, and then it just started to turn yellow and, um, you know, die away. There was never a bud uh, developing on the inside. That is exactly the same thing that happened last year. Now, the year before, uh, with the first growing season, when it was in this pot, uh, it did bloom, and it was a gorgeous, gorgeous bloom. So I know it's capable of blooming, um, the only thing that I would say was different between the first year when it bloomed and the second and third year when it didn't was that in the first year I continued to fertilize a bit more heavily while the sheath was developing and in the second and third year I would say I probably cut way back on the fertilizer although the watering was probably the same. Okay, so as you can tell, this um, pot is rather tight because these roots, you know, it's a, it's a good bit root bound in here. Some of the roots are, I think, even attached to the plastic. So I'm gonna have to go around here a bit, see if I can get this to loosen up so that it will cut loose from the pot. And worst case, I'll cut the pot because, um, you know, this one is um, sort of a thin orchid pot, not one of my better pots. There it goes. Okay. So, let's have a look here. I'm getting away some of this older media. And uh, as it rolls onto the kitchen floor, I always like to say I have one of the cleanest kitchen floors in the entire neighborhood, even though right now orchid bark is on it, because every time I repot an orchid in the kitchen, I have to mop the floor. So, there's work way after the video that you see me filming. Now, I watered this a few days ago, but as you can tell, it's already pretty dry and uh, you know I do think for the next growing season next well next blooming season rather next fall and winter into the spring I will definitely go back to what I did the first year which is fertilize this plant a bit more because maybe that was necessary in order for the bloom to develop properly And I'm not, you know, 100% certain that it's necessary to get all of this media out. If I see clumps of sphagnum, I'll try to pull that out. That would be the part that would tend to deteriorate more quickly. There is um, a good bit of LECA in here, which is not a problem if it stays behind. A good bit of sponge rock, which is not a problem if it stays behind. And it kind of looks like that's how I repotted it. Um, you know, I will put a link in the upper right hand corner of the screen. I'm fairly certain I have uh, a video for when I repotted this orchid the first time, so I'll put a link for that if I can find it. And then I know for certain I have a link for when this was a first time bloomer, so I'll definitely put that link in the upper right hand corner of the screen right now as I'm editing. Okay, now, you know, I'm going to reflect here just a little bit on my orchid growing over the years. There would have been a time, and I probably still do this for Phalaenopsis, but there would have been a time when I would have belabored every little piece of media out of this orchid in order to repot it. 
but I have, I think, come to recognize, realize, notice, whatever, that it doesn't have to be like the most perfect, pristine, clean, sprayed um, root system in order to thrive. And as your orchid collection grows, you may find that, especially during the spring season, that it's kind of difficult to do, you know, the 110% work every single time you repot something. So while I'm going to do a thorough job here, and we are probably going to trim some of the dead roots, I don't think that I will be you know, trying to work out every little last piece of work. It's just, um, you know, not necessary. And the Lekka pieces are certainly no harm, as well as the sponge rock. Now, the other thing about this orchid is that in its previous pot, it was potted um, a little bit on the high side, meaning that the rhizome was mm, a little too high above the top of the media. So when we're putting this in the basket today, I'm gonna to be trying to get that rhizome just the tiniest bit lower. Okay. Now, you know, there is a bit of a root trim needed here. And what I'm going to do, because the root system is extensive and all of the roots are white and unless I go one by one and feel each root it's really difficult to tell which ones are still viable so in the hopes that I can maybe get a little something to turn green to let me know that it's still alive and uptaking water I am going to go rinse this under the sink real quick and um, hopefully that's going to help me kind of work through trimming the root system. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick little trip to the sink and I'll be right back. Okay, back from the sink with this orchid and it did help a little bit to do that step. Um, as I was cleaning up my mess from the unpotting, I did save a lot of the pieces of like a sponge rock and a few pieces of lava rock in this cup because there is absolutely no reason why I can't reuse this um, in the basket. All right, so um, I'm going to be doing this root trim rather quickly, almost uh, more like I might do if I weren't filming it. But let me just really, really quickly explain how I do this and then I'm just gonna kind of go and maybe even fast forward the video um, because it is pretty repetitive. So if there is a string from a root that is no longer living, I will cut that away if it's easy to get to. If there are pieces like this, which are just disconnected, I will pull them out. Um, as this orchid was under the sink, I was able to tell that some of the roots greened up and or turned white, which is, you know, a big sign that they are still alive. Um, some of the brown roots, before I cut them away, I will actually uh, give them a quick squeeze to, you know, make certain that that portion is dead before cutting it away. There is one rogue root right here, which was out of the pot but has a growing tip on it, so I will try to be a bit careful of that. All right, so I'm going to stop talking for a bit so that I can uh, concentrate on this trim. And I'll fast forward the video because it is just rather repetitive as I work my way through here. Okay, um, I will be back with the audio in just a little bit.
and that's going to be about it. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside and uh, just kind of clean this up a little bit and set the orchid aside because the next step is to get the moss lining the basket. Now the bag is a little bit crunchy here, so bear with me while I open it. And, you know, when you look for cocoa fiber, you oftentimes find it in a preformed sort of mat or mass. And I didn't really want that in this case because I wanted to be able to shape it to conform to the inside of this basket. So, I think what I'm going to do is just sort of pull it out in pieces here. And you know, I want it like about that thick. So, as I pull out pieces here, I'm just going to line the basket with it, sides and bottom. And it's actually relatively easy to pull apart. I'm surprised. I thought I may have to fight with it a whole lot more. And I want it to be a thin layer because after all, you know, I want this orchid to have a bigger growing space than what it had previously. I don't want it all to be taken up by the cocoa fiber. And all in all, I want it to be aesthetically pleasing to look at once the orchid is repotted. If I pull out a clump like this, I'm just kind of spreading it out a bit so it's not quite so thick. And, it, you know, if some of the little pieces um, stick up over the edge, that's perfectly okay. Sort of adds to the charm of the repotting, I think. So I'm just working it over the edges here. The other thing <laughs> that I have, I guess, come to realize when it comes to orchids is that sometimes less is more. Sometimes the more you fuss with it, the less cooperative it is. So I'm doing my best here to make it even and to spread it out, but at some point continuing to fuss with it doesn't do much. After all, the purpose is to keep the media from falling out, so as long as there's a web of the cocoa husk between the media and the wire basket, you know, it should be fine. And I can always go back and tuck some along the edges if needed. Okay, so out of this bag, which was, let's see, does it say what size it is? I don't even see on here how much was in the bag to begin with, but I hardly used any because it is packed in there pretty tight. All right, so setting that aside. Now, the media that I'm going to be using is just my typical Repot Me Catlea mix. But before I do that, let's make sure that what's going in is going to be okay. Yes, I think that will be just fine. But we are going to take a quick look here because if you notice this rhizome, let me kind of get the basket out of the way because the roots are hanging up on it. The rhizome, the oldest part of the rhizome is right down here where the pseudo bulbs are smaller. It tracks along right through here, kind of bends around. And these last, I would say, four pseudobulbs are the ones that have grown in my care and are on the newest part of the rhizome. So as the rhizome sort of bent around, it will continue to grow from this point right here if the growth pattern continues um, as it has while I have uh, grown this orchid. So I want to be making sure that this 
the oldest part, I guess, of the orchid, which are these pseudobulbs right here, are kind of closer to the edge, and that the newer growth has some um, space to grow in the future. So I'm kind of on purpose pushing this one a little bit to the side. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do is drop down the LECA and the sponge rock that I saved because that will kind of help anchor it there while I reach for this other bag of media. Which is a little bit heavy. And remember here too, the goal is to get the rhizome uh, maybe a tiny bit more buried than what it was before. It was riding a little bit high. And I'm kind of tamping it down, but not pressing hard. And I'm also trying to make sure that some of the media gets down into the inside of the root system for moisture and to stabilize the plant. I don't think any new roots are going to grow there, but it does need that as an anchor. To do with this rogue root here? Well, I think I will just kind of lay it on the top there. When I move this orchid outside, you know, any root that's like sticking out like that is uh, going to be prone to just breaking off. So. It will happen again, but there's no reason to start off that way. And then, of course, you know, we're going to need to decide if any staking is necessary here. It wasn't staked before, and I don't think I ever did have it staked because the root system inside the pot was substantial enough to support it. And it's working out well here that the rhizome is a bit more covered. And I'm hoping that by hanging this basket that I'm able to not only move this around a little bit more if I need to adjust for more or less light, but I can also turn how it's hanging maybe a bit more frequently and it can get some light from the top down so that maybe the pseudobulbs grow a bit more straight. Um, light training for me with these plants is difficult just because I have so many of them and um, my light tends to kind of like come from the side rather than from the top down. I don't know, it's hard to describe, but light training is kind of problematic, I've found, for me anyway. Okay, wow, I think this is a success. Okay, now, this is the next step here. So you can see how the cocoa husk lines the basket and it's holding the media in just fine. There's a bit of a lip still here so that when I'm watering this, you know, it doesn't just roll over the top edge of the basket. And it's pretty stable. 
Um, as soon as a new pseudobulb grows, um, I think, you know, the new root system will really help establish this one in the basket. And I'm going to take a quick little break here and clean this up, and then I want to show you how I plan to actually hang these baskets and what I purchased for that purpose. Okay, let me get the tag back in, and I will be back with the finishing touch here. And so here is the finished repotted orchid outside on a gorgeous spring day. I added a three-point hanging chain to the basket and it has a clip at the top. You can hang it off the limb of the tree and then it just has clips to hook to the basket. And I'm rather pleased with how this turned out. Okay, moving on to orchid number two. Okay, so day two and orchid number two, our creative repotting continues. So this time the basket is a little bit more open weave. Uh, we will see how the cocoa fiber works in a basket that has a little bit less wire and uh, we'll be setting that aside just for the moment and I noticed when I was um, editing the first part of this video that the tag for the second orchid did not focus so I like to call this my epi complex hybrid I'm going to give the camera one more chance to focus on that tag so that you can see the full name and hopefully that has happened by now and we're going to go ahead and unpot this one and see what's going on. So, uh, this one is rather root bound as you can see from the bottom of the pot. It has enjoyed growing in this pot for about the last three years, but as you can see, it probably does need something a tiny bit larger now. Um, this one wintered uh, under the grow lights. And, you know, it's going to be clear here that these roots that are growing from the bottom of the pot will have to be removed. Uh, it's either going to be that or cut the plastic pot, which I would rather not do because I do believe I could use this pot again. And um, there just really isn't going to be any way to pull this up without trimming this root system. It's going to be a bit of a problem. And uh, even after I trim this, I'm expecting a good deal of resistance. Because there's even roots coming out the side of the pot. All right, let's see. Nope, not yet. All right, let's cut the roots on the side. And again, this one was watered um, a couple of days ago just like the Cattleya type orchid, but uh, it is already rather dry. All right, let's see if that helped. Roll it here just a little bit. Still giving a good bit of resistance. Although I feel a little bit of cooperation here. There we go. All right. So a good um, sturdy root system. You can see that this one was planted in um, possibly somewhat slightly smaller bark chips. So, you know, I had my um, Cattleya pre-made mix from Repot Me out for both of these orchid repots, and now that I'm seeing what this one was previously potted in, I may take a little break and see if I have something that matches a little bit more closely to what I used the first time. And as I did with the first orchid, I will probably put this one under the sink to 
help me determine which of the roots are still uh, working for the plant and which ones are dead because this is a relatively substantial root system here. And uh, once all of this bark is off, I will take a minute to point out how this plant has been growing uh, over the course of several years as it has been in my collection. This one has never bloomed for me, so there is mm, some adjustment that I probably need to do about how I'm growing it. I have a sneaky suspicion that that adjustment probably has to do with uh, needing increased light. So we may be trying that this year and you know now that it'll be in the basket maybe it will be easier for me to kind of move it and hang it in different locations and see how it reacts to the light. And since we're speaking of light, let me point out that this particular growth right here um, initiated and continued to grow under the grow lights during the winter. You can tell how purple it is compared to the rest of the foliage and that is a signal that it is receiving enough light under the grow lights because that's uh, the purple tinge of anthocyanin uh, which shows that the plant is happy with the amount of light it's receiving. Now the other thing that I would say is that I think there might be something a little bit amiss with the genetics of this plant. Uh, the top of every single pseudo bulb has had kind of a bent over top leaf and I don't think that has to do with adequate water or anything. Um, the growth when I purchased the plant was that way and then subsequent two growths um, sort of had that bent over top leaf and you know the, the very very beginning growth had the bent over top leaves. Now I have to say the one that initiated over the winter does not have that condition yet and sometimes plants uh, do sort of grow out of their genetic glitch um, so hopefully this one will be a more uh, properly formed pseudobulb when it gets full size and not have that bent over leaf at the top. Uh, there have been occasions where what seems to be a sheath forming at the top of the growth, but then it never did really turn into anything. So again, you know, this plant has never bloomed for me. All right, so I'm gonna take this one over to the sink, rinse off some of this little bit of extra bark, see what these roots do, and I'll be right back with the basket repot. Okay, so back from the sink, and as with the first orchid, uh, running uh, this under the sink has actually helped in this case as well. You know, I'm really able to see where the newer uh, white and greenish roots are. Some of the dead roots, the threads are really showing up now. And uh, you know, the brown ones, I do sort of have to feel those to uh, see whether or not they have any substance yet before trimming. Uh, also, as with the first orchid, I'm not concerned about getting every little last piece of barked bark out. I'm not concerned with getting every little last piece of bark out uh, because it is time consuming and it really just doesn't make that big of a difference to the orchid as long as you're getting most of it out. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start trimming here just as with the first one, cutting off any of the threads that indicate the root is dead. Any pieces like this that just pull out, I will be doing that. And uh, as I start trimming the dead roots away here, I will um, stop the audio, fast forward the trimming because it does become rather repetitive. Okay, see you in a bit when this orchid is finished with its root trim.
Okay, that is the bulk of the root trim. Um, you know, as I was doing this, there are a couple of new little roots developing right here. And as I was doing that trim, I also noticed that the next new growth will be coming from right here. So a great time to get this one in a new setup. All right, so let me clean this up. And the very next thing we'll be, we will be doing is getting this basket in front of us. I'm gonna grab the cocoa fiber. The bag makes a lot of noise. So, as with the first one, I will simply be pulling wads of cocoa husk out, and then I will be flattening and shaping it to fit the inside contour of the basket. Now, I'm kind of thinking this is going to be enough. Let's see. So I sort of get it to be the thickness that I want, and just start shaping it around the inside of the basket. Now, I don't think that I will have to use a thicker layer than what I did for the first basket, even though this one is more open weave than the first. I, I think, you know, the same amount will be fine. You know, as it sort of mats down, it will create a barrier so that the media doesn't fall out. Although I may have to step over and get a bit more from the bag. And having done the first one, uh, that tiny little bit of experience is making this one easier already, I can tell. So do this one time and you'll have it down. Okay, I need to grab a little bit more. Um, it kind of like, you know, likes to grab onto itself here. So, you know, as you sort of form it around, it makes an interlocking nest, I guess would be the best way to describe it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we're just going to sort of check that this is going to fit in here with no problem. I'm pretty sure that is the case. Yes. I will have to put some media in the bottom so it's not potted too deeply. Okay, so I still need to go out in the garage and look to see what kind of media that I have um, that's more similar to what I used to pot this orchid the first time. If I can find a link for when I repotted this orchid the first time, I will um, insert that here. And I saved from uh, the old media, the lava rock. I'm just going to go ahead and put that in the bottom to weight down the cocoa husk. And I'm going to take a quick little break and go look for some media that might be a bit better than the Cattleya mix, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back with what's a little bit of a hodgepodge of media. There are um, some pieces in here that are smaller than the uh, Cattleya mix, so I'm just going to go with that. I don't get the sense that this orchid is uh, particularly, um, particularly particular because it does uh, seem to want to grow an extensive root system. Okay, so, you know, this one kind of grows more from the center out. So I'm going to position it so that it is in the center of this basket. And in just a second here, I'm going to be checking the height of the repot because this one was in its old pot just about perfect. And um, I really don't want it 
noticeably lower or higher than how it was potted before. And one of the things I'm noticing with this one is because the cocoa husk was a little bit fluffier, um, there is a need for more media to sort of press against the cocoa husk so that it is held to the interior of the basket. So that's working pretty well so far, but it's taking more media than what I originally eyeballed because this cocoa husk needs to um, sort of not be quite so fluffy. And so as I'm pressing it in, I'm also flattening the cocoa husk to the interior of the basket. And tamping down a bit, but not pressing too hard. They are epiphytes, which means the air, the air is necessary for the roots, or rather the roots like the air. So we need air space between the media for most orchids. And just a little bit more and I think we will be there. I have been very careful of these little root tips. It might not have seen like it seemed like it, but I was very aware of where those new little root tips were as I was doing that so that I didn't snap them. Okay. Pressing around the edges just one more time. And I believe that is looking pretty good. You know, and as this one develops its newest root system, it will, you know, establish itself in the pot a bit better. Okay, now this one will also get a chain and uh, be hanging out around the orchid hut for the growing season. Okay, so if you enjoyed this video or learned something new, please give it a thumbs up. The subscribe button is coming up in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Don't forget the notifications bell to let you know that I have posted something new. Thank you all so much for watching and talk to you next time. I just wanted to give you a quick glimpse at what the finished basket with the chain looked like. And if you were here at the very beginning of the video, I also wanted you to know that little Miss Cece, she is just fine. <laughs>